In this short video tutorial, I want to show a technique on how to use averaging of images to reduce noise in starry landscape photos. The principle behind this is described in full length here in Cambridge and Color homepage. It's basically um, the foundation is that noise in the image is random and if you um, stack multiple images which were shot with the same ISO and same settings in Photoshop for example and average those, the noise will be reduced while the features of the photo stay intact. So applying this to starscape images there are a few problems because as we know the stars move across the night sky which you can see if you do very long exposures you usually have the trailing stars but even if you have short exposures like here of 20 seconds and ISO 2000 if you take different images which I did here, I did four images the stars are a little yeah, placed in different position for each of those images even if I photograph them directly one after another so how can I average those images? first thing I need to do is I have to align the images but not align them to uh, with the landscape aligned but with the stars aligned and this is hard to do in Photoshop you can only try to achieve this manually but this takes a lot of time but there are different tools out there which can help for example for the Mac there's a tool called Starry Landscape Stacker and I also found some tutorials on it. This looks like a quite neat tool for this, but unfortunately I'm using PC and uh, first it was hard to find the equivalent for this tool on PC. But some research brought me to this Deep Sky Stacker tool. And I will now show how to use this Deep Sky Stacker to average images. And it does quite a nice job, but you have to do some preparation for the images. One problem of the Sky Stacker is um, it can only address one gigabyte of RAM. And if you have large files, for example, I'm shooting with a 5 DSR, averaging four or even three files is not possible. After like five minutes of processing, I run into the boundary of one gigabyte and it just stops. But there's a solution I found for example, I have four photos here and you already see this is the uh, unprocessed version. There's a lot of noise here. It's also quite dark. So the first thing I did, let's look at the base settings. I brightened it up, added contrast, reduced the light slightly. Then the detail tab, reduced the sharpening, added some noise reduction but not too much because I'll do most of this with the averaging I was talking about and also the lens correction I activated it both chromatic aberration and the profile corrections and what I also did you see I have a crop on this image and I cropped it just above the landscape and what this does let's quickly synchronize the photos again Um, it removes a lot of information from the image which is not needed for the sky so I'm just interested in averaging the noise in the sky so I can leave out all the other information of the photo this reduces the file size when I export those photos as TIFF and this also enables me to use them in starry landscape stacker without running into this one gigabyte boundary so let's look at the tool as I said, I exported those photos as TIFFs, 16-bit, and in the stacker, I have to excuse the German version here, but I think you can also download English version, you use basically the top option is open light frames. And then select the TIFFs, load them, and they'll appear down here in the window. You can just select all of them. And what I'll then do, select it, stack selected images. 
and I didn't experiment much with this. I just leave everything at the default and just press OK and then the tool will do its magic. So after a few minutes of processing this view appears here in the Deep Sky Stacker. You see it's very very bright but the reason for this is it's uh, basically it's an HDR, it's a 32-bit file and it's also saved into the same folder as the original TIFFs and I've already opened it in Photoshop so let's go head over zoom out again so this is the 32-bit TIFF you see it up here the first thing I have to do I have to tone map it basically same as with HDR so I just go to the mode and go to 16 bits this brings up this HDR toning dialog which I can now use to tone map the image and the neat thing is the amount of options I have here for example one important option is this detail slider which let's move it far to the right increases noise and also the amount of stars moving it far to the left reduces noise but also the amount of stars so this here can be used to fine-tune or get a good compromise between noise and number of stars in the image and for me this is the most important slider here but you can also play around with the others for example reducing the shadows a bit making it darker or adding or removing saturation and up here I can play around with the glow which ultimately um, influences the brightness of the stars for example if I increase the radius I'd give it some time it all gets a bit brighter if I increase the strength this blurs out the whole image so basically you're free to play around with it and tune the conversion so I just hit OK now and we'll now have a look at this tone map version of the image in comparison to one of the four images I started with so let's look at the original you see lots of noise and also chromatic noise and now here in this stacked and tone map version the luminance noise is nearly gone and there's just a bit of chroma noise left and by just using four images I got this clean star version which is now a good starting point for further post-processing but I can do more to this image to reduce the noise even further so let's just create two copies of this layer here and I'm just keeping this copy to have comparison later this upper copy I'll set to the mode lighten in Photoshop and now the magic if I let's zoom in for this this layer beneath I go to filter blur Gaussian blur and what I do I increase the radius if I increase it just a bit you see there's a glow appearing around the stars if I increase it further at some point this glow will disappear let's go to like 10 20 so we're now at 25 pixels blur and if I now hit OK let's remove this light and layer what you see here this is the layer which contained the stars you see little halos around the stars now but basically it looks quite flat and also there's no noise and if I now add or activate this layer again the layer which is in lighten mode the stars will appear and now let's compare this to the layer we had before here there's even less noise now and I could even tweak this a bit using the blur again and Gaussian blur just maybe using a little higher radius to also remove this this glow so I go with a hundred let's have so now those glowy areas are also gone and now I have a very clean star image so after the averaging a little noise was left I'm not sure if you see it actually in, in the video version here on YouTube 
but we saw some chroma noise and a little less uh, a little bit of luma noise but after this quick trip uh, trick here no noise at all is left and i have yet to test this with milky way shots because i think there it won't work like this because you'll blur basically some features of the milky way but for this normal star shots it's a very great technique to get a clean sky with nice and bright stars and from here you're basically free to use this portion of the sky in the original image as you want for example i brought in this image which i shot like half an hour after the stars so when this when the sun was already just beneath the horizon and i had enough details in the landscape i shot this image and basically i brought in the the sky portion so the sc stars of the other one and yeah i did the same technique using lighten as we did here to marry it to the landscape image and you're completely free if you have such a clean star sky image you can do with it as you want you can use techniques which i show in my post-processing recipes where i show you how to further tweak the stars and also how to get a nice looking twilight star scene and let's finally look at the result i had here so you basically see there's the stars from the cleaned up version and then there i have this twilight and this gives me quite a surreal image <laughs>